Penumbra is a an integrated building shell system uh, and uses the available light, both internal light and external light, and controls that in a way that you can move information across the surface of the building. The idea came from a competition that Paul Minifin and I uh, did last year for the House of Fairy Tales Museum in Ondense in, uh, in Denmark. And that was to house the Hans Christian Andersen collection. Originally it was for children and we were really thinking or trying to think like what is it that would be a completely amazing effect for a child that, that they would be able to engage with and, and sort of love. And the idea is asking the question, how do the fairy tales affect us? How do they exist in our world? And our thought was that maybe we could use the shadow or the shadow as an idea and have this notion that the fairy tales were existing all around us, but we could really only see them by the shadows that they cast into our world. We have a cellular structure where we can turn clear uh, cells on and off between different gradations, so not entirely on and off, but um, even between 20% opaque and 80% opaque, so you get very soft transitions, and that we can uh, connect all of those cells together so that we can reproduce digital images. We could have had Hans Christian Andersen figures moving across the surface of the building in the Nordic afternoon light and internally the flickering would have felt like you were inside a forest, so as if you were inside even a Hans Christian Andersen story. I think there's sort of something else about how does the virtual world interface with our experienced world. There's a huge discourse now around the fact that by allowing the designers to control the machines were actually, and the design process to actually be part of that machinic iterative thing, we actually can start to imagine things through the machines that we couldn't necessarily yeah, absolutely. understand with, without that process. In a way it enables you to realise dreams that we've always had for architecture and indeed in this case for storytelling as well. And so this project has become about an active facade for a building but it's an active facade that modulates the light as it travels from one side to the, to the other, either from the inside to the outside or the outside to the inside. During the day when the light level outside is higher, the impact is much greater on the interior of the building. And when the light level outside is much lower, then the impact is actually on the exterior of the building. So you get something that's where it's dynamically changing all the time. That's really quite different to, say, the Times Square neon sign on, wrapped around the face of a building could, for example, be an airport. So imagine it was at Melbourne Airport, Formula One race cars racing across the outside skin of the building and the inside you would still get that interesting movement across the surface of the building on a, in a constant way. Standardised circular apertures distributed through a sort of circle packing algorithm across a given surface in a certain condition. So we can have different sizes. We've got algorithms that can efficiently pack these things quite neatly. So We're imagining this is um, a cellular structure that could be constructed out of something like carbon fibre by robots. So it would could be an order, completely automated manufacturing process. Uh, and the reason for doing that is so that we can create almost any shape that we like using a parametric uh, modelling system. And because of its cellular structure, it's hollow internally and we can drive all sorts of services through that. For example, if we just pressurise the hollow spaces within the honeycomb, we, can, we have an air handling system, for example. So that's what I mean by an integrated um, building shell system.